Hello, and welcome to an unboxing from the Big Chiz himself, Richard Chismar, or more accurately, uh, Cemetery Dance Publications. This is just a big book haul, really. Lots of stuff in there, including my receipt, which you don't need to see. Um, so, <clears throat> um, apart from Cemetery Dance getting a lot of flack from titles taking a while, uh, they do still publish titles. And I get my title shipped to me in bulk uh, to save on shipping. So this is, I guess, it's not really any sort of schedule to when I receive these. Sometimes it's based on uh, just, you know, the output of the titles themselves. Uh, so it's not necessarily every quarter. It just depends on when the books come out. So this is my, I guess, it's probably been a half a year since I've received a big old box of Cemetery Dance. But let's dive in together and look at some of the wonderful titles that Cemetery Dance has published uh, in 2022 as we near to a close. So, several titles in here. Several limited edition titles. First up, we have The Eater of Gods by Dan Franklin. Now, I did do a book review on this. A uh, few weeks back, uh, probably a month or two back, uh, which was based on the ARC that I had received, uh, which is the advanced, re advanced review copy. But here, in my hands, is the limited edition, the actual hardcover, which I believe is still available. I know the hardcover's been selling like crazy, uh, so they just announced that they're doing a paperback edition, which is coming out soon. But very nice cloth binding, especially with the stamping on there. Uh, this is a cheap, affordable hardcover. I mean, it's a small hardcover, but uh, it's cheap and affordable. 40 bucks. Beautiful cover artwork there by Elder Lemon Design, uh, also known as Keelan Patrick Burke. Very, very nice. Uh, Dan Franklin is actually uh, one of the warehouse magicians over at Cemetery Dance, so uh, you get a lot of care behind the scenes from Dan Franklin. Uh, let's look at these end papers. Nice. And there is the signature. It's not numbered, it's just signed by Dan Franklin. And I believe while signed copies are available, you can order it and request a remark from Dan Franklin. Uh, I did not get a remark uh, because I forgot to request one. But I did see online somebody requested an octopus, and it is a quite a nice remark. Um, Dan Franklin is proud to be an author, not as proud to be an illustrator, but he did a good job with the, the octopus. It looks pretty darn good. Uh, so I did do a review of the Eater of Gods over on my channel that you should definitely check out. Um, but in short, it is a uh, almost like a dungeon crawling tale of archaeology. Uh, a man suffering the recent loss of his wife. Uh, they're both archaeologists. Uh, they had devoted themselves to uncovering this tomb, uh, but she has passed before the tomb can be fully uh, fully explored. So in her memory, him and a small team go to explore the tomb, and it turns out that uh, there might be some awoken spirits in the tomb who are not happy with them being there. Uh, it's not necessarily too strong of a horror title. Uh, it's more of an adventure title, if you will. Uh, there are horror elements, but um, it's not going to be as like balls of the wall like horror factor. Uh, it's more subtle on the horror, if you will. Uh, it definitely more it more so explores loss. And it, it's very well written. It's very very good little uh, uh, short novel or novella if you uh, if you want to call it novella. Uh, it's a tale of grief, tale of loss, um, with some tomb haunting thrown in. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good read. You should check it out. Uh, the next title is one that I'm very excited for. Now these are the graveyard edition titles. Uh, they kind of have a nice little leatherette uh, cover. This is the seventh one. Uh, Ronald Malfi, who coincidentally also was the author of the sixth title, Little Girls. This is The Night Parade. Now, I really wish, I know Centipede Pre Cent Cemetery Dance has had delays with their publishing, uh, but man, I, I was really hoping that these would be getting, you know, kicked out the door as soon as they can, because these are just gorgeous. Uh, the end papers, they're just, you know, they're, they're not textured or anything, but they're always nice little designs. Uh, there's Ronald Melfi's signature. Uh, this was limited to 500 copies, of which this is number 160, which is the number I try to keep going in uh, my Cemetery Dance titles. Uh, no interior illustrations like normal, but that's fine. Uh, the Night Parade uh, is kind of the story about a plague, from what I've read. Uh, so 
It says, first the birds were gone, then the insects took over, and now the people themselves are kind of being driven to madness, uh, which involves a father, David, uh, whose wife has passed, and he takes his daughter on a very strange road trip uh, where she feels like her father, the daughter might be the, uh, the Ellie, the daughter, might be the cure to all of this madness, uh, which kind of sounds also like the plot of The Last of Us, but I'm sure it's not like The Last of Us. <laughs> Coincidentally, also named Ellie, but um, pure coincidence. Anyways, no Joel in there, there's just David. Uh, very intrigued. Uh, it sounds like David is having some hallucinations, which kind of comes with the disease, uh, which also kind of gives us a sense of kind of bird box by Josh Mallerman. Although that's more of like you see it and then you immediately kill yourself. Although the fun little connection between Raul Malfi and Josh Mallerman, they're both rock stars. So Josh Mallerman uh, has his, has his the high strung, Raul Malfi has Veer that he is the, I believe, singer and guitarist for. So, you know, you can find him at a book signing or at a Veer concert. Uh, the Night Parade, uh, like most, I think, if not all of the Graveyard Editions, is sold out. But uh, you can find it on the secondary market. They're not, you know, they're not usually too expensive. Uh, the only one that's a little bit pricier, or seems to be a little bit pricier, was, uh, for a little while, the first title, uh, which was The Handyman by... Uh, Bentley Little, and they had announced that Bentley Little, a lot of his other titles were going to get Graveyard Editions as well. That hasn't come into fruition yet, and uh, based on the recent edition of the store, hopefully that still happens, but I don't know. Anyways, we have two more books to show off here. The next one is Gwendy's Magic Feather by Richard Chismar himself, with a forward by Stephen King. This is the numbered edition. Um... This is going to be one where people are going to... These next two titles are going to be ones that people say, oh, they, this is why Cemetery Dance takes forever. Uh, both of these titles did take a while. But they, uh, at least this first one, hopefully, you can see it in the quality. There's some controversial stuff with the second one, but we'll get to that in a second. Anyways, nice little slipcase. It feels like a pretty good slipcase for Cemetery Dance, for Gwendy's Magic Feather. Uh, this is the second title of the Gwendy trilogy. The first one, which was Gwendy's Button Box, uh, had the signed edition published by Lonely Roads, which is an offshoot of Cemetery Dance. This one has very nice exterior illustration by front, uh, dust jacket illustration, if you will, by Francois Viancourt. Very nice work that Francois always does. Uh, interior illustrations by Keith Minion, who did the interior illustrations for uh, the trade edition as well. Trade edition's been out for a couple years. The limited edition just came out this year. Letter edition is still in the pipeline. I actually have that on order as well. Um, I do have the limited edition of Button Box. It's gorgeous. And then I do have the limited edition of Final Task on order as well. That one's going to be a lot more popular than Magic Feather because that one is co-written by Stephen King. Anyways, nice cloth binding. I had a plain end papers, but they do have a texture to them. There we go. Richard Chismar's signature. Oh, look at the corner! Oh, no! Bent as hell corner. That's sad. Ah. Uh, oh well. Wow, that, that corner took a beating. I'll see if they have extra copies, because that, that looks rough. Um, it's not numbered. I thought it'd be numbered. Uh, it's just signed, limited to 750 copies. 2019 is when Ma Magic Feather originally came out. Uh, so, introduction by Stephen King. I don't know. Did Stephen King have an introduction in the trade edition? I don't know if he did. I can't recall. He must have, um, unless it's exclusive to this edition, but I don't know that it is. Interior artwork by Keith Minion, right there. Keith Minion actually has his own YouTube channel, and uh, there are some little uh, art artwork videos on there, but he has a lot of woodworking, too, which is really cool. Uh, very, very big margins on this, uh, because it's not a very large novel. Uh, so, Button Box was written, co-written by Chismar and Stephen King. Uh, Chismar went solo for the second title, Gwendy's Magic Feather, which feature, features Gwendy Peterson all grown up. She's now working uh, up on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Uh, when she is brought back home to Castle Rock after the disappearance of several uh, young girls. And so, now... Wendy, who's kind of escaped from her past, from uh, was it John Ferris? 
what was it? Richard Ferris? It has to be Richard Ferris because John Ferris is an author. <laughs> uh, Richard Ferris. Uh, yeah, because he's got the RF from, you know, Randall Flagg. Uh, Richard Ferris, who is the mysterious man from her past, who gave her the button box, kind of comes back into her life. And so she is thrust into this uh, disappearance, kind of murder mystery plots. Uh, it's not bad. It's all right. Uh, boy, that guy. It's, 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 not a bad, it's not a bad story. Uh, it's not Chismar's best. Chismar has some really great short story uh, really great short stories out there. This one's okay. Uh, this also has, this This was definitely not in the trade edition, a bonus section featuring samples of Stephen King's handwritten corrections. So, okay. There we go. So, yeah, you have, even though Stephen King did not co-write this, we do have Stephen King's handwritten corrections in the back. A nice little bonus section. Um with a bent up and beat to hell signature page, but uh, yeah, that, that sucks. But I'll see, you never know. Maybe there's a non-dinged copy out there I can exchange it for. Uh, anyways, I don't know, I think this is sold out. I think Wendy's Magic Feather is sold out. Uh, you can buy the trade edition. I'm sure you could find copies of the limited edition on the secondary market. There's also a limited edition through SST Publications, which uh, controversially, published their limited edition like two years ago. Uh, they, they're actually doing the limited edition for Gwendy's Final Task, the third title. And I think that's shipping now from SST. Um, whereas Cemetery Dance, their final task might be next year, uh, optimistically. Anyways, the final title of this box is uh, a lot more controversial than Gwendy's Magic Feather. This is the Southern Reach Trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer, because I accidentally ordered two of them. Oops. Uh, I did get another copy of this, which I unboxed by itself on the channel. So you could probably watch more in-depth video there. I'm just going to kind of briefly glance through this one. Um, this one does have a slipcase as well. Slipcase is all right. Uh, some people were remarking that it's more flimsy than the traditional cemetery dance slipcase. I don't know if that's true. I think it's mostly due to the size of the book. Um, like Gwendy's Magic Feather feels like a regular slipcase. This one's a little bit wider, which makes it feel a little bit flimsier. Um, but I don't know that it's necessarily different than the normal slipcases. Although the spine leaves something to be desired. There's a lot of blank space on it. So this one's more controversial uh, because it, uh, it took a while, a long time. Several years. Uh, in those several years, Subterranean Press did several Vandermeer titles. I'm going to move this one because it's, it's taking all the light from the light here. Uh, several Vandermeer titles were published by S Subterranean Press in the same time span it took to get this one. Uh, so we had a bonus section in Wendy's Magic Feather. Uh, controversially, we do not have a bonus section to the Southern Reach trilogy. It was supposed to have a bonus section, but it does not. Um, here we go. Jeff Vandermeer's signature also leaves something to be desired. It doesn't look like his normal signature. It looks like it's just more of a quick scribble. This is number 160 to match uh, my other Cemetery Dance titles. No interior artwork. It's just no table of contents. It just jumps right into all three titles from the Southern Reach trilogy. Um, I, some say that they didn't put a table of contents on there to try to hide the fact that there is no bonus section. Uh, when this was originally announced, they said it would have an extensive bonus section that... Uh, an extent they would have an extension uh, extensive bonus section of area X information which never came to fruition um, I know some of the copies also had kind of damaged pages uh, I don't know if this one does I imagine it did it was kind of like a printer error but I don't see it by flipping through it when I'm reading it I might find it um, nice little stamping on the cover uh, stamping's all right uh, this is sold out. It's been sold out for years. Uh, hopefully, Jeff Vandermeer actually got his art, his author copies, because he was not a happy camper about it. Uh, he expressed his uh, displeasure with working with Cemetery Dance, which is a shame. I don't want any author to have any displeasure with any of the uh, publishers out there. And there are some definitely some crummy publishers out there. I don't necessarily consider Cemetery Dance to be one of them. Um, they do definitely have their missteps uh, and their delays of publishing. 
But I, I think the quality is typically very good when you actually get it. I think Wendy's Major Feather is very nice. Southern Reach Trilogy is obviously a disappointment uh, in terms of not having the bonus section, not having interior art, not having the marbled end papers it was supposed to have. Uh, it was disappointing. But there are other great titles, like their uh, Graveyard Editions. Reader of Gods is really good. Uh, their trade line... Uh, so Kevin Lucia took over the trade line at Cemetery Dance, uh, which includes ebooks and trade paperbacks, and he has been kicking ass with that, like paperbacks coming out left and right. Um, but they've been having delays with their limited edition line and, and their lettered editions. They've had lettered editions that have been waiting on trade cases for years. Uh, there's one that I'm waiting for, which is. I mean, I'm waiting for the, the letter edition of Gwendy's Magic Feather. Uh, I'm also waiting for the letter edition of Exorcist for the 21st Century by William Peter Blatty. P uh, William Peter Blatty has been uh, dead for years, but the letter edition, which will have his signature in it, is still being held up by the tray case. Uh, I mean, they have the books in the warehouse, but their tray case manufacturer is kind of a one-man operation, and they've been struggling, so they've been behind for quite some time. Uh, but anyways, they are still publishing titles, especially the trade editions. Um, obviously, not all of their limited editions, when they come out, are going to make people happy, like Southern Reach Trilogy. But I'm fine with it. My TBR pile is big enough that I'm not jonesing for the book. Uh, so, unfortunately, it does take several years for the book to come out. But, um, you know, it does eventually come out. I don't think Cemetery Dance is going to go under, although they are going to... Unfortunately, be losing customers with some of the publications like uh, Southern Reach Trilogy here. Anyways, thank you very much uh, for watching the video. Uh, thank you, Cemetery Dance, for the books, uh, for the beautiful pack job. Uh, that's shame about Gwendy's Magic Feather. We'll see if anything can be done about that. You never know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a smaller unboxing than the last one I had. The last one I had had more than four titles. So it's a little disappointing this one only has four. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you around next time.